Martin Hall joined by Blair O'Neill, and we're going to talk about indoor practice, things you can do that will help your game, even if you can't get to the golf course. Now, uh, just before we, just before the camera started rolling, you said when you were growing up, when you were a kid, you used to hit balls in a net at home. Yes, in the garage. We had an indoor hitting bay which was great to use when I couldn't get out to the golf course or couldn't drive myself to the course. I'd be able to practice into a net, and it was great. Well, it served you well. I've got a net story that did not serve me well. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I think if you're using a net, you have to be really careful. Uh, does it keep you mobile hitting balls into a net when you can't get outside? Yes, it does. Does it keep the speed there? Yes, it does. What's the problem? It's not easy to know where the ball is going. That's now, true. we're a lot better these days than we used to be because we have video. You can put your cell phone on a tripod, and I do that frequently. But you need to have some idea where the ball's going if you're going to hit balls inside. I'm going to give you some drills that do not not involve hitting golf balls in case you don't have a net in the garage. But if you had a net in the garage, I think you've got to at least do one of the two following things. You can get a launch monitor of some description. They come in all prices. Yes. They can be really expensive. They can be not that expensive. But at least they give you some idea of where the ball's starting. Let's say you don't want to do that. Blair, I'm going to have you set up. And what I've done here in studio is I've taken a lineman stick and I've just put it on the target line. Okay. So not, not only for you to look at that, but when you hit, you can see which side of um, the, the alignment stick you're missing. So at least you know where the start direction is. And I will, I will say this, Ian Woosden, my friend when we were kids, uh, won the Masters, number one player in the world, uh, way, way back, it shows how he was smarter than me, he used to hang a biscuit tin down, a sizable biscuit tin down, right in the middle. So even if he didn't actually see where the ball went, it would either go... <laughs> and he knew he hit his target, he knew it. he did, and that's why he was so good. But I think, look, you have to have some target when you're swinging inside. So let's just hit one here. Okay. Don't think that'll interfere with the computer, so we're hitting light on. And uh, having an intent to start the ball, and you started that right over that alignment stick beautifully, and the All ball right. went straight. Now, let me tell you my story. Um, it was back in England, way back in the day, and we had a period of snow for about about three months. So I thought, not to worry, I will not be daunted. <laughs> and I was on a kick of actually really hitting my driver. So I hit drivers about 500 balls a day for the best part of three months. And when I, had a, when I, when I tell you I was hitting it solid, that is an understatement, I was just ripping it right out of the middle. And every ball I hit, Boom! Good ball I mean, contact. it was so solid, so solid. I actually wore a hole in the net about here. We had to replace the net. Couldn't golf, snow. Problem, uh -oh. when the snow melted oh. and I went outside, I had the worst pew duck hook you've ever seen. Okay. And that's where you have to be really careful into a net when you're hitting golf balls because it's not easy to predict the flight of the ball unless you at least do what Wuzzy did, put a biscuit tin there or something you can hit or better yet, get some sort of launch monitor. Now, something of substance that you could do even if you didn't hit golf balls. Uh, two things I want to talk about here really, Blair. Keeping the head fairly steady. I mean, Jack Nicholas, one of my great mentors, thought that uh, keeping the head still is golf's one unarguable, universal fundamental. So anything you can do to keep your head still would be great. Set up to the golf ball for me. Okay. You could do it this way if you had a helper. Someone could just stand and put two clubs just lightly either side of your head like that. And you could just make little three-quarter swings going back, little three-quarter swings going through, learning how the shoulders tilt and turn at the same time. So you're getting a fairly you know, a fairly steady, centered point yes. to your golf swing. And I think that's important. Um, the head stays still. Everything else is moving around and underneath and, and twisting and turning and talking. But you want the head to stay still. OK, let's say you don't have someone to help you. Let me have your club. OK. Here's what you could do. Put your two hands across your shoulders. You could just shimmy up towards a wall, put your head against the top of a wall, okay. and I'm just going to have this club represent Pretend the wall. Pretend that's the wall. At the very least, I would recommend people do this. And you just turn, and you turn, and at the very end of the swing, you would probably just move away from it. You wouldn't okay. keep the head on the wall all the time. But gosh, if you just did that a few times every week, when you get to the golf course at the weekends, if you're lucky enough to play every weekend, that is definitely going to help you uh, have much better body action. Get some good reps. 
Absolutely. So I, th I think when we see people who've got beautiful golf swings, I mean, you know, I think of Rory, um, you know, for many years I thought of Ratif Goosen. I think of Xander Shoffley. I mean, what a gorgeous looking yes. golf swing. Uh, what we're looking at is two things. We're seeing a, a, a hub that's pretty steady. So learn to keep the head steady. You're also seeing something where the club is on a good plane. Now, what does a good plane mean? And what's a drill that I've got for that? A good plane would pretty much mean that however high your hands are as you finish the backswing, they're going to be about the same height on the follow-through. They're not going to be low on one side and high on the other or the other way around because that would tilt the plane offline. So I have a drill to do that. It's called the three-step. Okay. The, the, it sounds like a dance, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. There's the, there's the three-step back and the three-step through. The, you know, the Stoke-on-Trent, there's the Texas four-step, I think, or the Texas two-step. <laughs> Texas two step, isn't it? Yeah, this is the Stoke-on-Trent. Now we're doing three, the three-step. Yeah, this is the Stoke-on-Trent <laughs> three-step. But to get a good feeling of where it should be, and again, you don't have to hit a ball, Take your setup, get a good grip, get your good balance, get your good stance, all that sort of stuff. You know, okay. you can check all those things at the weights underneath the arches. Um, but, but watch carefully how I do this and then copy. Number one, without changing the angle of inclination forwards, I'm just going to bend my arms, bend my wrists, put the club on the shoulder. That's number one. Number two is I'm going to turn my chest away from the target, but still keep that angle of inclination. And number three is, I'm going to stretch my hands as far away from my body as I can get them. And then I'm going to stay there for about 10 seconds, and I'm going to scan my body. What do I feel? Well, I feel a load in my hips, I can tell you that, which means I don't normally do that. I feel a stretch in my shoulders, which means I don't do that. And I've got to be a sponge. I've got to absorb that. That's where I want to be at the end of the backswing. So again, let do, do that with me now, please, Blair. It's going to be, one, I put it on my shoulders, two, I turn without altering the sort of the tilts of my body, and three, I stretch the arm. That's where I want to be at the end of my back. So I might close my eyes and hold it there. I feel like this puts you in the perfect position. Uh, it's puts you in a very good position. Yeah, we're very close. Now, what we have to do is match it on the other side. Okay. So now we've got the three-step forward drill. And that's just going to go club on the trail shoulder. Cl sorry, club on the lead shoulder. Now, this changes a bit because I turn, but my trail heel elevates a little bit. And again, now I push my hands away so they feel the same height off the ground. So I'm wanting to feel, here's my backswing, one, two, three. If I know where I should be at the end of the backswing, now we'll do the forward swing, one, two, three. And I know where I should be at the end of the forward swing. And I can join those two spots together, then I'm going to have a fairly on-plane golf swing. So let's just see you do those two drills. Okay. We're going to go backswing, one, two, three, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now do the forward swing drill, one, two, three. And then you've really just got to think of connecting those two dots. And you'll pretty much capture impact. I call those the bookends okay. of the golf swing. You need two bookends on your desk, otherwise the books will fall over. All right, so that looks classic. Feels good. Here we go, nice steady head, nice position at the top. Nice Bends. position at the finish. Well, if that's Feels what good. indoor practice leads to, it's really worth I'll doing. Take it. Uh, listen, indoor practice is very valuable. It keeps you flexible. It keeps the speed up. It keeps you going. It keeps the contact. But please don't make the mistake yours no. truly did. Uh, don't <laughs> wear a hole in the net without having any idea where the ball's going. It was horrible when I came out and the snow melted. It was just horrible. So you do need some way of knowing where the ball is going. That's good. We've got these tips and drills to help everyone at home. And I hope that this does help your game. For more great tips, subscribe to Golf Channel on YouTube and make sure to watch School of Golf.